name is Lee Fondakowski. I'm a playwright and a director, and I am a co-creator of Spill, which is a play and art installation about the Deepwater Horizon BP oil spill. Everything is done. Shrimp season's over. Snapper, everything came to an end before it started. And I'm just thinking of a way of life, a history, you know, doing things that I love to do, duck hunt, fish, coming to an end. Everything. I talk about this piece and I say, oh, I'm making a piece about the oil spill. People say, oh, the oil spill. And they had the images that were on the news, the brown pelicans and oil, and a lot of the, the, the horrific things that, that the whole world saw. But it's not just a story about how oil and BP are bad. It's a story about how oil built coastal Louisiana. Oil brought people out of poverty. Oil, you know, is such a part of the culture there. It's so visible that it's almost invisible. You know, we make money off of the oil industry, and we also lose land because of the oil industry. And the oil industry has something to do with that because they cut canals through and then it causes further erosion. So there's a real crisis there right now that not a lot of people in the country know about. First thing you need to know, oil is the battle. Coastal erosion is the war. It's a piece that contemplates the complexity um, and gives voice to the people. We're supposed to be in a land rebuilding cycle. And we would be, except for all the levees and the pipelines, this oil industry tearing up the marshes and so on. And then on July 15th, when the oil stopped pouring into the Gulf, it was like people switched the channel on the news and it was over to everyone else. And so there's, it's a contemplation about how we as a culture move fast through stories. There's one tragedy after the other. It's like environmental disasters, weather disasters, international crises, and we, we move through these 24-hour news cycles so quickly. The thing that almost irritates me is the reaction that this BP spill is. Why don't they react to the other spills that we've had? And that's a real tragedy, that we allow those spills to occur in Louisiana on a regular basis because of direct violations of the existing regulations. I know because I covered a thousand a year, 25 years. That's a lot of spills. I've been working since 1974, and we have huge spills. I never got a call from the media. And then we assume that because the media is not covering something, that the story is over. But the story is far from over for the people who are living through it. And the way history is being told versus how it's being lived and experienced. But you always know that you can make a living out there on the water. You know you're going to make some money for sure. But now, we don't know what to think now. Because there's no future out there. No small oysters, no spat, so we don't know how long for this come back. When I went to work for the industry in 1960 out of New Algiers, Louisiana, as a drill rig worker roustabout, life was pretty simple. Our equipment was dangerous, yes, but everything was on the surface. You could walk up, poke it, kick it, get a wrench out, fix it. You could see a leak before it became catastrophic very tightly selected. They wouldn't let any jerk on board a drill rig. Maybe I was an exception. <laughs> These things are more complex than a space shuttle. It's actually easier for that shuttle to take off and connect an international space station than it is to drill a well in deep water. Because you've never seen in your life before crystal clear water. Crystal water? You smell chemicals? Okay? Losing weight, sporadic rage, you gotta control yourself. And how can I prove, the to how, how can I prove that BP put toxins in me? Point out of hush. Let's put it this way. Spent three years in the military, and I saw some beautiful places, but I can tell you this. There's no place in the world like the bayous of Louisiana. I can't live anywhere else, I'm sorry, I just can't. You say, Shane, were you taught to deal with this space vehicle? No. Shane, were you taught to deal with this space vehicle as something bad starts to go wrong? No. And so I look at those pictures of those people and I say, I'm really sorry that we had to have you give your life in this way. All of them. Not just Shane. All of them. Jason Anderson, Dale Burkeen. Donald Clark, Stephen Curtis, Wyatt Kemp, 
Carl Kleppinger, Blair Manuel, Dewey Rivette, Adam Weiss, and Gordon Jones. You said you were going to speak to his father, and I think that's a good idea.